Hi, I'm Lisa Hennessy, and this is episode 10 of Knit Brave Crochet. I might be a little late uploading my video because um, yesterday was Sunday, and I tried to tape it on Sunday, but the man behind us was watching a football game, and you could hear him yelling, and then my husband, who knew I was upstairs videotaping, decided to take out the leaf blower. And then on top of that, I did do, I did tape, but um, after I watched it back, I couldn't use it. And um, I also had a little incident on Saturday. Before we went to the gym, I decided to eat a protein bar, which was kind of chewy. And as I was eating it, I felt this really hard crunch. And I thought, wow, that is a really hard nut in this protein bar. And I pulled it out of my mouth and I said, this looks like a tooth. And sure enough, it was. I had a root canal done 27 years ago on this one of my back teeth, and the cap had fallen off. So um, I know you probably couldn't tell, but when I watched the video back, I could see this big black gap in my mouth. And so, um, you know, the vanity got the better of me, and I thought, I can't use that videotape, so I'm going to do it on Monday because I was able to get it. One of my husband's um, good friends is a dentist and I did have to drive a 45 minute drive there and back, but he worked me in this morning and now I am back to a full smile, not any toothless gaps there. So um, I'm back and I'm videotaping today. So this may not get edited and uploaded until Tuesday. We will see, uh, but I'm wearing today um, this is my three-in-one hat that I think was on episode five. Um, I'll have to, I can put a link to it. I have, a, actually, I have a tutorial on how to make this, um, but this is how you wear it as a cowl around your neck. And, um, and then when you take it off, you, and I would not wear it with this woven through it. This is the tie at the top, um, but you would just um, pull it through here. And... it, cinch it, tie it. So then you would have a hat that you could wear. Um, and then if you have long hair and wear a ponytail, you just loosen up at the top and it comes out. And I used the Eco Cozy watercolors. Um, that's what I used for this hat. And this was the seed stitch hat that I made um, a few weeks ago using that same yarn. So I got two hats. This was actually, this is all the yarn that was left. That's it. That was left over from that one skein. So I made the most that I could. So for, I don't know, this was $9.99. Figure I got it 30% off. So I got two hats for probably $3.50 or $4 a piece. So that's a good deal. And I, it got really cold in Texas. And so um, that's why I'm making hats. And I actually started, um, this is the, my favorite go-to hat to make for men is the Twisted Rib Skull Cap, which is out of my book, Knit, Pray, Share, and this is what it looks like. So I did start this hat right here. I've started it, and it's, I'm making it with Yarn Be Soft and Sleek, and because these are hats that, this is out of my book, Knit, Pray, Share also, but these are hats that I'm giving away to essential workers. I start and end all my projects with one, some shade of pink or red, and this one will have red on it, to symbolize how we're all sealed with the blood of Christ from the beginning to the end. So those, um, because I was wanting to get a couple hats made, the Twisted Rib Skull Cap, I'm not gonna finish until I finish my prayer shawl. I have, this is episode 10, which means I've been working on this for 10 weeks. I had this started. And again, I'm working on a lot of other projects in between, but I really need to finish this prayer shawl. And I did make a lot of progress. I mean, you can see that's how much I did. So I probably only have six or eight inches left. So I am not going to finish my hat, um, my twisted rib skull cap, until I am done with my prayer shawl. And I'm saying it here so that I'm holding myself accountable. That prayer shawl, I'm going to be wearing it next week. You're going to see it all finished. So. Um, and then I did, because I'm in between doing stuff, you know, I, I, even though I love working on this prayer shawl, I get bored with it. So that's why I did the three-in-one hat. And then look at all these scrubbies I have made. Um, this is seven, and I've got eight here to bind off. And last week, 
I showed you how to do the knit scrubby using Scrubology Scrub It yarn. And I said when I did these with the, um, this is the Scrubology 2.0 in the silver. And um, I said I cast on, I thought I cast on for, um, 14 for this too, because that's what I cast on for this one. But I actually cast on 16 stitches. And I knit it for four, in, this it measures four and a half inches across. So I just miss, make it four and a half inches in length. So this one is ready to bind off. And I still, I because I use two skeins and I have to use the outside, I'm feeling this and I think this will be number eight. I think I might get two or three more. So, you know, considering this costs, you know, $3.99, 30% off, I get two skeins. I'm going to do the math next week because I'm going to, after I finish my prayer shawl, I'm going to finish my knit scrubbies using this yarn so I can tell you how many scrubbies I got out of two skeins, making them four and a half inches by four and a half inches. But I did want to show you when I bind off on my scrubbies, whether I'm using this scrub it yarn or this uh, 2.0 yarn, I do, I don't do a, a full stretchy bind off. A, a, a stretchy bind off is where you would um, do it on every stitch on your bind off, but I do it on every other stitch. So I know you probably can't see this. I might try to get my husband to do an overhead view. But what I do is I just bind off normally with two stitches. So when I bind off normally, I'm doing one, two, and then I'm pulling the bottom over the top. But then for a stretchy bind off, you pull the yarn to the front and you make a yarn over. And so I'm going to knit. So now I have three stitches on there. And I pull, typically you can pull both stitches at the same time over, but since this is double, it makes it kind of funny. And so then I pull the bottom over the top. In fact, let me, I, this isn't ready. I need to still knit longer, but I think I can show you what I'm talking about easier because it's single stitches versus, and it's not furry yarn. But I'm binding off just a regular bind off you, where you knit the first two stitches and then you pull the bottom bottom stitch over the top stitch and then you bring the yarn in the front for a yarn over so now I have three stitches do you see that and then you take both stitches again this yarn is hard for me to grab two of them at the same time but you just pull one over the other then I'm on this one I'm going to do a regular bind off just the bottom over the top and then a yarn over bring the yarn to the front and then I'm going to I have three stitches now because that's my yarn over and then I pull the yarn over first over that stitch and then I pull that stitch over that and so what happens is when you do a stretchy bind off on on these scrubbies then it makes it it's not super stretchy but um, otherwise it kind of gathers and pulls up so this would look kind of wonky be shorter on the end so I just think it make, gives it a more finished look if you don't want to do a stretchy bind off go up a needle size rather than Use, these are size 10s, go up to this size 11 needle and bind off with a bigger needle. That way, it just doesn't gather like that. So though I so I was working on these, that's why my prayer shawl didn't get done. And I finished my baby blanket. This is the yarn I used from Joann's. And this is also the pattern out of Knit, Pray, Share. But I was concerned about this yarn because I thought it might it might bleed because the wrapper had some red stain on it, but I washed this in cold water and there are these things um, that Shout makes and they're color catchers and I put three of them in, in with it just to make sure. And then on the final rinse, I put a cup of vinegar and it did not fade at all. The color catchers didn't have any, I was expecting them to look pink and they were, they were still white. So this does not bleed wash it in cold water and then I also put tags on um, on my gifts which you can download from knitpreshare.com and I'll put a link to it but there's also care instructions that I include I put um, machine wash on cold or cool water on low cycle and tumble dry load which that's what's great about this yarn you can wash it and dry it in the dryer and because who what new mom wants to get a blanket that they've got a hand wash and air dry so that's why I love giving these blankets and I have enough yarn left over to do a lovey and I'll, I might do a little tutorial on how many to cast on for doing that lovey too because the 
it's just good to have a smaller blanket for the baby to bring in the car with them in the car seat so when they fall asleep they have their little nice soft blanket and the other thing using this yarn you can um, if it starts losing its softness stick some fabric softener in on your final rinse and so that helps keep it soft too so those are definitely knitting wins for me I did wind up some yarn because I have a hat that I want to make for my daughter-in-law for her birthday. Her birthday is in December, so I would like to make her a hat. And I, these are the colors I'm going to just show you because it's really pretty. You've got, this is Lazy Cat Yarn. I bought it at DFW Fiber Fest. And this is kind of a knitting tip. When you wind your yarn, um, use these cheap little hair clips from that you can get at the dollar store. And of course, they're not a dollar anymore. They're $1.25. But um, I use those, and especially when I, I have a basket with little balls, um, I have some smaller clips that I use too for those, but if you can clip the tails, then it doesn't get all tangled, because I can't tell you how many times I've had to try to untangle those little balls of yarn. So that's just a little tip for you on um, when you, if you don't want to have tangled yarn, I, that's something I do. Um, so those are my knitting wins for the week. If you've made anything or given anything away, please comment in your comments if you have any other um, patterns that you like to use using this scrubby um, 2.0 yarn or the scrubology scrub it yarn let me know um, but for now I'd like to read my devotion that posted today um, on November 14th from knitpraysheer.com my devotion from knitpraysheer.com is called using your gifts to work together and the scripture from it is but it is one and the same spirit who does all this as he wishes. He gives a different gift to each person. And that's 1 Corinthians 12, 11, And that is the good news translation. But I'd also like to read the NIV version of this. And that is, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Um, but the, they mean the same thing. But I just like looking at different versions. Um, and I go to BibleHub.com usually to put in a scripture to see all the different versions um, because I don't like always like to use the NIV version you know I just like to change it up but because it is November and that is typically a month people will thank give Thanksgiving and they are thank they will list what they're thankful for on social media um, but one of the things I wanted to share that I am very thankful for and one of the bigger blessings in my life is my church ministry that I have um, it started out as a baby hat ministry and we've grown um, and it's we started in February of 2021, so we're almost going on two years now. Um, and it's what started as two or three of us has grown to 10 to 14. Some weeks we even have 20 people. It just depends on the time of the year and how busy people are. And we've branched out. We're not just making baby hats. We're making baby hats, baby blankets, uh, hats for the homeless, scarves for the homeless, ear warmers for the homeless. And in fact, I think we have over 200 that we're going to deliver today to an organization in Fort Worth. Um, and I'm, even though I wasn't a huge part of that, um, I'm going to help deliver it. So I'm really excited about doing that. That's going to be um, this week. So hopefully I'll be able to talk about that experience. But what, I, what struck me is, you know, how God has handpicked each of these women to put in this group. Um, a couple of them, I don't even think they realize that, that they have the gift of evangelizing. They, because we did start out with, you know, three people, basically. There are two of us, and then the third person who came, she really helped us recruit. And that is a form of evangelizing, get, telling people about a ministry and getting them to come. And then one of the women she recruited started recruiting other women. She was a, a part of a widow's group. And so she brought in more women. So, and, the, and then these women that have brought women in, they've learned how to use a knitting loom. Some already knew how to crochet. And they've helped teach other women how to use these uh, the, the knitting loom. And someone who was new at it is now teaching someone else how to do it. And so it's, it's just really encouraging for me that we can all encourage each other to share our gifts. And I, you know, the, the other thing is I missed for two weeks because I was um, helping out at the Dallas Market Center one week. And then the second week I was sick. And so I didn't get to be a part of the group. And I just, I left this last, last week when I went, I left with such a full heart because some of the other women, they have the gift of humor. I will laugh and it I just it is so much fun. I, I just leave there with such a full heart and it's like we're kind of our own little family and we welcome when new people come in. It, they don't feel like we're cliquish, you know, they, they, I, we, everyone welcomes them. And so that's what I like about our group too. And each of us have our own unique spiritual gifts that we work together to serve in the body of Christ. So, because as a group, 
we can't have an, a, an effective ministry if we aren't all using our gifts. And initially, one of the women who came, she, we were in a Bible study together, and we were talking about our group, and she said, I just love what you're doing. I wish there, I, I don't, but I don't know how to knit or use a loom, but I want to be a part of it. Is there anything I can do to help you? And at this time, we were making 200 hats a month, and every one of those hats had to be a tag. We would cut out these tags, hole punch them, put some yarn through it, and attach them to the hats. And that was really tedious work, and that would take away from us making more hats. And so I said, hey, if you don't mind, we could use somebody to put tags on our baby hats. And she said, I would love it. I, I'm your person. I will be there. And she would come every week and help us tag the hats. And then eventually, that kind of would slow down, and she would watch people using the loom. And she said, you know what? I think I want to try to learn how to do that. And she knows how to do it. She can make hats. She can make scarves with it. She can even teach other people how to use it. So, you know, it was, but it was her servant heart that brought her to our group. And the reality is every one of the women in our group has servant hearts because we all are wanting to serve other people. And so, like I said, I can see how God uniquely placed each woman in our group to, to share their gifts and us to help build each other up. And our one common thread is that we love Jesus and we want to share his love with those in our community. Not one gift is more important than the other that somebody has. Each person is necessary for us to work together for our common goal. You know, one of the ladies, she can crank out baby hats and she can make baby blankets, you know, but that's not everybody's gift. And so that's why I love how nobody, I, my goal was to make one hat a week, a baby hat. And, um, I think I made it to 40 and then I've just kind of slacked off because I've got all these projects going. But that doesn't make me a bad person. That doesn't mean I'm not giving as much. I have other gifts. I, I'm very, I'm able to delegate. I have leadership qualities. I'm, you know, I organize. I'm an organizer. So I'm, I was able to help bring this group together. And like I said, when we deliver these items to the homeless, I think I made one hat and there's over 200. But I don't feel bad that going to help deliver it, even though I didn't make a lot of those items, because it was, you know, I still had a gift that I shared in the group to make that happen. So, you know, don't look at one person's gift as more than your gift. You know, you have something unique to bring to a small group. I mean, and we all, we use this opportunity, we pray for each other. We also pray for the unborn babies um, that will get the hats, the pregnant mothers the homeless people that are going to receive these items. So, I mean, that's something we do as a group, and it makes us whole. And so, you know, I just wanted to share how I started a group and how all of us work together. And is there, you know, because if God has laid some type of small group on your heart to start or some type of ministry, I would encourage you, do it. I mean, don't let that stop you. One of the women in, my, in our group, she's part of a Christian book club, and they will pick any form, uh, any genre of reading, but it's written by a Christian author, and once a week they get together and discuss it. So, I mean, that's, that's still sharing God's love in your kingdom and trying to learn more about God's love that you bring out to your community. I mean, if you like to cook, you might find an organization where you can provide a meal once a month, and you, you can, as a group, get together. I know our church uh, makes meals for one of the retirement uh, apartments, and so... When I'm able to, I will either bring the food or help make the food or help serve the food. So, I mean, those are just little things you can do. Um, and I want to share Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. The first week of my baby hat ministry, two of us. Two of us. But we didn't get discouraged because we had just felt, I just felt like God opening the doors through um, the church that I was attending for this group to happen. They were listing us on their um, small group website and people were finding us. And so that was encouraging for me. And we just knew in God's perfect timing, he was going to bless this group with more members. And so, you know, those are things I want you to remember because even if only one person shows up to that small group, you're making a difference in that one person's life. And that's worth it. So, you know, again, if you um, are just thinking about it and God's laid it on your heart, just pray about it and just ask God to increase your territory and he will do it. So I would like to end with my prayer from my post this week. Uh, Father God, thank you for opening the doors for a ministry where we all have the same common goal, to glorify you through our hands and our hearts. Forgive me when I let fear keep me from stepping out in faith when you open the door for an opportunity 
for me to minister to others. I ask for courage and boldness for those who are feeling the Holy Spirit nudge them to start a small group or some type of ministry. I give you thanks for blessing me with others who can help advance your kingdom when we gather in your name. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray these things. Amen. Thank you for joining me for episode 10. If you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share on your social media. I will see you next week, and I will be hopefully, no, I will be wearing my prayer shawl to show you. God bless you, and have a good week.